Yield grade. Every day, cattle are valued on it, but few know its history. A 1960 study of 160 carcasses serves as the basis for the industry-wide equation. In that day and in that era, uh, the primary animal was a short-statured, early-maturing Hereford steer, and the close trim of that day to the retail consumer was a half inch on roasts and uh, a quarter inch on steaks and, and other thin meat cuts. The industry has moved to larger cattle, leaner cuts, and we account for the entire carcass today, uh, something that wasn't done in that original equation. Today's coolers look much different than they did half a century ago. So in those original data, the, the heaviest carcass weighed 900 pounds. Uh, on Monday, the average carcass weighed 907 pounds. So we have already surpassed, on average, the absolute end of the spectrum of the cattle that are used to create the, the equation that we use today. The animal scientist says it's time to bring that arithmetic into modern times. We've made great advances in nutritional technology, given that we're now on the, the eighth version or eighth edition of nutrient requirements for beef cattle, but we're still on version one of the yield grade equation. And it's time to, to update and to make new advances. One suggestion, make the premiums and discounts linear rather than thresholds. Uh, one of the, one of the the things I think the industry really could look forward to is improving the valuation on an incremental basis, such that uh, today a yield grade 3.9 animal on most all grids receives no premium or discount. It's part of the, uh, the base par value, whereas a yield grade 4.0 might receive a $15 per hundred weight discount. Lawrence recently completed a research review on yield grade and says the bottom line is that cattle have changed and valuation systems need to catch up. I'm Crystal Albers.